Hello and welcome to another video by readspro.com. Uh, I am Gaurav Jain. I am an author of these two books, which is about REITs and INVITS, and the other one is about real estate investment and financial analysis. Do visit our website to have plenty of resources and insights on REITs and INVITS. And if you are a little unfamiliar with REITs and INVITS, I suggest you to pause here and see what REITs are. See, do watch our previous videos and visit our website to learn more about REITs and INVITS. So today the topic is the Nifty is at 21,000 and would REITs and INVITS follow soon? So that's the topic that we would discuss today. And for this, we would take it up in three parts. The first part, we would talk about the Nifty and the REIT index. We'll compare the two, the REIT and INVIT index and the Nifty index. The second part, we will see how the recent market movements in the past five, 10 days have happened. And uh, because the data that we have is still a certain data, and then we will talk about the recent market developments. And then the third, we will talk about the way forward. What as an investor, one should look at while investing in REITs and INVITS and what to expect in future. So the first part is that the REIT, the, the Nifty index, in fact, has gone up tremendously well, high to about 21,000. We don't know where it'll stop. Obviously, it's, it's a good news for all investors in the market. Now, let's try to map this with the REIT and INVIT index. And if you are unfamiliar with this, then let me just... Uh, uh, tell you that the REIT and INVIT index was launched in April 23 and the weights and the constituents are given on the screen here and this is something that's been a recent development and the REIT and in INVIT index though is there we don't have something like a ETF for REITs like if you would want to invest in the nifty 50 stocks you could buy an ETF or you could have a mutual fund dedicated to the nifty 50 but not so in the case of REITs we don't have these two right now and the exposure that mutual funds have is a little limited as per the guidelines that they have to adhere to so you do not really have a REIT and unit exposure if you go via the ETF or the REIT root, uh, MF root so uh, let's just compare the data the charts for the two dates for the two uh, indexes indices which is the nifty 50 and below we have the the eat and index. So uh, as you see, in this part of 23, there has hardly been much correlation between the two. This data is still November 30th that we have here. And if you see the uh, if you see the beta of the and uh, eat and index, it's 0.12, and the benchmark is Nifty 50. That's for a one-year data, and since inception, it is 0.24. Uh, the weights which the sectors are holding in this uh, index, in the REIT and REIT index are, are here on the left-hand side, bottom, which is 71% for realty, which is the four REITs that we have. So if you want to know more about this index and download the fact sheets and other things, I suggest that you can visit the uh, this page on NSE website and look under, under thematic indices and look for the REIT and in REIT index, which is here, which is shown here. So uh, the read the firstly before I go ahead further, let's just clarify one more thing which has already been clarified in another video. The reads a lot of people try to compare reads versus equity versus debt. Now one thing that we clarified in the video was that reads and invits are a different asset class and they do serve a different purpose. And that purpose is to be kept in mind before you make any investment in reads and invits. Let's just now look at the REIT price movement over a period of time recently in the past few one week so if you see here on the on top on the left hand side is the brookfield REIT which has gone up from a 236 level to about 251 recently and embassy REIT which kind of had a uh, pretty um, you know that it had a low below 300 uh, on 6th of december and then uh, today it's at around 329 330 that's what the data is right now for the past one week so the macro level understanding uh, firstly let's look at the macro level understanding why this has happened so the uh, it also this these dates also coincided with the rbi announcement on december 8 where 
the RBI gave very positive indications and the repo rate was kept at 6.5%. Now, this has uh, an impact on REITs. The in interest rates do have an impact on REITs. We'll talk about that a little more in detail later also. And the SEZ Amendment Act has been one of the largest contributors to this kind of a movement. And if you wish to download the publication you can visit our telegram channel which you can see on our website the the under the resource section so the telegram channel is what you can go to um and uh download this as well as various new notifications and uh data uh the second uh thing is okay now coming back to the sez problem Earlier in 2020, these benefits of an SEZ were withdrawn. So what happened was that uh, the tax benefits for new SEZs from March 20 lost appeal and they were not occupying uh, these uh, SEZ spaces. So there was exit and relocation to non-SEZ office spaces. That's what happened. So this, this uh, problem was kind of sorted out to a large extent uh, when there was an SEZ amendment uh, uh, in on December 6th and so promptly on the next day itself on December 7th embassy read issued a, a, a publication which said which talked about how the uh, thing uh, the SEZ amendment would impact their positions positively so if you see the embassy read price in fact jumped from a low of 300 on 6 December to around 330 so was that justified or was it euphoria that's what we will look at further on and the sez amendment act if you the sez amendment if you really look at it is about largely about two things it's about floor wise denotification so you can have non sez places floor wise let's say you have an office building which is 15 floors then earlier the whole building had to be denotified from the SEZ. Now what they can do is they can denotify floor wise. Each floor can be denotified. However, there is a percentage restriction of total. So I've just shared further on screenshots of this amendment. And the first screenshot is about a non-processing area shall consist of complete floor and part of a floor shall not be demarcated as a non-processing area. That's the first thing screenshot the second one is how the percentages would work out too so there is a limit of 50 percent minimum which they have to uh which they cannot go below that's and then there are certain other categories so this this whole amendment you can download from our telegram channel and now the third question is that how and where from would reads go from here so let's just say that we really feel that it should be cautious optimism and REITs and invits like it was mentioned is a different asset class for a different purpose now what's the purpose the purpose is cash flows and inflation hedging and also diversification so with these three basic things about cash flows diversification and inflation hedging if you have this in mind then REITs would suit but if you start comparing REITs with debt or equity you could be uh, you could be in a bit of a you know a shock in in the longer run in terms of you know how why because your expectations would be different so you, they may not meet your expectations now let, let what's the way forward now there are three again there are three ways that we could look at it one is how what it's, what is happening at the industry level secondly how does it compare with the world and third what should be your macro strategy in the overall scenario so before that, let me just uh, bring you back to your attention back to the resources. So if you go to the website readspro.com, you would have uh, access to these books. You could buy these books on through this website and you could also join a WhatsApp group, a discussion group on Reads and Invits. So you need to go to the website and also have a look at this. Uh, the free downloads would be essential and very useful to you as well. Now, the next part is about the industry. Now, how does the industry, how does it happen in terms of the industry? Industry has been pretty proactive. If you really look at 
thing the way things have happened uh, and there has been recently a formation of reit association secondly the government has been pretty supportive of the industry there's been a mini reit framework for smaller reits there have been a net distributable cash flow guidelines where it was very vague earlier and then most importantly are the sez guidelines which we've just discussed so the industry at that industry level there have been proactive steps and there has also been a shift in occupier base at the industry level what one is seeing is that the there has been uh, an advent of gccs and the shift in occupier base so if you see 5 years ago the technology sector had the lion's share and now what we are seeing is that that's getting diversified right now in in the the 2023 part this is the colliers report and you can see that there has been a shift in the way the occupiers have taken up reit spaces so the comparison the second part is the comparison part now the comparison is has a limited scope both in terms of india because when you look at the comparison uh, and you really need to separate out reits and invits they are two different things reits are about property and invits are about infrastructure so so let's not mix that two which is of course mixed in a uh, kind of a, the the uh, reit and invit index that we have the second part is that the data from us reits does not really apply to india so a lot of times people talk about you know that there's been a massive recession in reits in uh, the us and this uh, the as you see the overall economic scenario is very different in india as compared to the us that we would all agree with on today and if you see the constituents again i'll i'll uh, i'm sharing this constituents by weightage and uh, i'm also sharing a snapshot of the uh, report on by jp uh, morgan with talks about how the reits have given a annualized yield which exceeds a lot of other asset classes so that's the data there but then this data also doesn't capture on what has happened recently there's been a massive decrease in uh, reit prices the reit listed securities in the us whereas india has also been affected however the scenario could turn out to be very different in india because property is a localized thing and the overall macro situation is different in india compared to reits that's what one would like to emphasize here now the third thing uh, after all this the third very third part of the way forward would be what should be your strategy so there could be a division of the strategy into a short term medium term and a long term so in the short term you could see interest rate changes this would impact this has impacted reits earlier this would impact reits earlier now also so if there's an increase in interest rates the reits tend to go down and if there's a decrease in interest rates the reits tend to go up there are factors for that we've discussed that in previous videos the second is the medium term we're talking about inflation and the rent would gradually get aligned with the inflation the rent in usual aligns with inflation and hedges inflation and the third which is a very important factor is that if you are an investor in reits look at the global demand the diet demand the occupancy levels and most importantly the current as well as the future rent increment potential don't just look at now look ahead and then try to formalize your strategy thank you so much if you like this video do subscribe to us and put your comments on the youtube section as well as write to us at support@reetspro.com thank you so much for watching